Okay, are you listening to me well? Am yes, sir. Okay. okay, okay. And is my screen sharing visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you very much. And welcome to you all in uh, today's virtual, virtual session. Okay. There is, we are uh, doing about the foundations of language and linguistics. Okay. And we are um, in uh, the key concepts of uh, language and linguistics. Okay. And under the key concepts of language and linguistics, okay, we have um, only two, uh, let's say, some chapters left. One is uh, descriptive grammar and prescriptive grammar, and another is what syntagmatic relation and paradigmatic relation. Okay, I'll try to wrap up with these two um, sub uh, topics uh, today. Okay, today, and I hope uh, we'll. Uh, finish it. Okay. Now, um, without getting uh, let's say delayed, I would like to continue uh, this um, descriptive grammar and prescriptive grammar. Okay. That is, you might have heard many times uh, what uh, grammar is. Okay. Grammar is actually that is the structure of language. Okay. That type of that structure of language can be let's say defined linguistically in two different uh, ways. Okay, one is descriptive grammar and another is prescriptive grammar. Okay, as we know, the terms so descriptive grammar actually that is that describes the use of language, it describes how the language is used um, in the present world. Okay, and prescriptive grammar actually that does the prescription of a grammatical rules. Okay, that prescribes grammatical rules. Okay, so descriptive grammar and prescriptive grammar are two, let's say, different views in language and linguistics. Okay, that's why from linguistic point of view, we have two different types of grammar. Okay, and descriptive grammar is relatively, it is, uh, let's say, modern concept. And prescriptive grammar is, it is what it is, it is traditional concept, okay, in some uh, sense, uh, we can uh, call uh, descriptive grammar modern and prescriptive grammar of it, what of it, traditional one, okay, and let's say descriptive grammar describes a language as it is used by the native speakers at a given period of time, and prescriptive grammar, grammar prescribes a set of uh, let's say uh, grammatical rules. Okay, which rule is used in what situation will be given in prescriptive grammar? Okay, that's why descriptive grammar and prescriptive grammar are the two different uh, types of grammar. Okay, uh, you uh, are ready. Uh, I think you are ready to copy uh, the points. Okay, from a linguistic point of view, grammar can be of two types. Okay, one is descriptive and another is what prescriptive. Okay, from a linguistic point of view. Okay, there are two types of grammar. Okay, descriptive grammar and prescriptive grammar. Okay, and now let's say descriptive grammar describes how a language is actually used by its speakers or writers. Okay. Uh, how it contemporary society, how language is used by its speakers is, let's say, described in descriptive grammar. Okay, descriptive grammar. Okay, that's a descriptive grammar. Um, actually, it is very much close to what close to the grammarians. Okay, grammarians. So grammarians, they try to uh, describe um, uh, the present language in descriptive, in descriptive grammar. Okay, and that's it. Just tells us about the frequency of the actual use of sentences, but does not prescribe the rules to use one sentence or the other. Okay, how many times? Okay, the grammar, um, the same type of grammar is used by the native speakers. Okay, is calculated, is calculated by what? By descriptive grammar. Okay. And on the base of, let's say, um, the frequency of occurrence of 
a sentence in a language that a sentence will be pre, will be let's say um, used okay that sentence will be used according to descriptive grammar but it doesn't prescribe prescri descriptive grammar doesn't prescribe the rules to use on sentence or the other okay what is the rule the, it doesn't prescribe the rule but it describes what type of language should be used uh, uh, in uh, let's say contemporary society okay in uh, the at, let's say present day society okay what type of lang language is used by the native speakers these days will be uh, let's say discussed in descriptive grammar that is described that's why it just tells us about the frequency of the actual use of sentences okay frequency of occurrence if let's say one sentence is spoken okay a type of language is spoken by more than 51 percent people then that is regarded as the good grammatical sentence according to what according to descriptive grammar okay it doesn't let's say a considers it doesn't takes uh, it doesn't take care of um, what it doesn't take care of the prescriptive rules the rules of language okay if that type of sentence is spoken by more than 50 percent of people that is as a that is the acceptable sentence in english okay in this way it describes um, the language okay and now next one is uh, a linguist finds a descriptive grammar very close to himself or herself okay linguist is very much close grammarians are very much close to very much uh, let's say close to uh, let's say a descriptive grammar that's how a linguist finds a linguist finds a descriptive grammar close to himself or herself okay and so the study of language needs to be descriptive okay the study of language needs to be descriptive because it helps us to know all aspects of a language okay that is it because of descriptive grammar we can let's say study we can learn about different aspects of language okay that's why it is very much helpful we need it we need descriptive grammar okay because um by the help of a descriptive grammar we can um, understand we can understand all aspects of a language okay so prescriptive grammar um, on the other hand prescribes rules for what is considered to be the best okay what is the best way of using language is um, described in what in prescriptive grammar because prescriptive prescriptive grammar prescribes rules okay it prescribes a rule it gives rules to use which rule is better than which one will be discussed in what in prescriptive grammar that's why prescriptive grammar alternatively prescriptive grammar prescribes rules for what is considered to be the best okay the best which rule is the best one that is prescribed by prescriptive grammar okay and pres uh, prescriptive grammar states a rule in preference to the other which rule is better okay this is described in let's say prescriptive grammar okay that is which rule is better than uh, the other this type of let's say prescription of grammatical rule is done by prescriptive grammar okay so uh, in uh, prescriptive grammar we you can get one rule in preference to the other okay which rule is let's say uh, most preferred uh, is given in prescriptive grammar okay one sentence will be correct only on the basis of what prescribed rules that's why here we uh, give much emphasis on what prescribed rules we first of all we see the rule and according to the rule we make a sentences we formulate sentences for we produce sentences 
Okay, so first of all, we see the rules. The rules are, let's say, memorized first. The rules are, let's say, studied first. And then on the base of the rules, prescribed rules, we make correct sentences. So one sentence will be correct only on the basis of prescribed rules. Okay, so uh, we these two are uh, the opposing views. One, de one describes language at, uh, according to uh, the contemporary use of language. Another prescribes a rule. Okay, this sentence, this rule is better for um, be, um, better than what other rules. In this way, there is language. The grammatical rules are given in prescriptive grammar, but descriptive grammar describes. Uh, uh, the use of language only, 8%, okay? So if the sentence breaks the prescribed rules, the sentence will be incorrect, okay? What type of sentence will be incorrect? Okay, though the sentence is um, spoken in, in at present day, uh, at present day world, okay? By uh, many people, okay? But if, uh, that is not considered best according to prescriptive grammar if it has let's say broken the prescribed rules that's why if the sentence breaks uh, the prescribed rules the sentence will be incorrect okay that is we have to write the sentence grammatically it doesn't uh, let's take care of how people speak um, in the world okay so now, see, the learning of, of language is supposed to be prescriptive, okay? When we learn language, okay? when we learn second language, for example, we are learning English language, okay? When we have to learn second language, when we have to learn, uh, let's say, next language, other than, our, uh, other than our native language, then it is supposed to be prescriptive word. We all follow what? We all follow mostly prescriptive grammar at schools, okay? In schools uh, uh, or college, colleges, we basically follow prescriptive grammar because we learn language there, okay? We go to learn language there. When we go uh, to learn language, then at that time we follow prescriptive grammar because it helps us to provide the correct uses of a language. Okay? What is the correct uses of a language? The correct uses of a language is studied by what? Prescriptive grammar. So prescriptive grammar is very much close to schools or let's say learning or it is very much close to teachers, okay, teachers, or let's say uh, textbook writers. And so textbook writers basically they follow what? They follow prescriptive grammar, okay, grammar. And written textbook often follow prescriptive grammar. As I told you before, that is written textbook. Okay? When you get textbook, uh, in the textbook, you, we often follow prescriptive grammar because their rules are given first and on the basis of the rules, you can uh, let's say, formulate the sentences. Okay, if your sentence, uh, if your sentence breaks the rule given, then that sentence will be incorrect. Okay, in this way, there is a written textbook often follow prescriptive grammar. Okay, it states how a sentence ought to be spoken. Okay, it tells us how you should use language, how language should be spoken. How language ought to be spoken. Kashari bol nahi parsa ta, eshari bol nahi parsa, matra mistake kunsa hai, kunsa. By what? Descriptive grammar. Okay. But descriptive grammar says, now, for example, you, you can get, uh, uh, you can be clear uh, right here from um, the example. Uh, we frequently say these days, what? I will, I will, we say. Okay, descriptive grammar says I will or I shall because it is most of the people in the world today they you they say what I will not I shall, but prescriptive grammar says what says I shall only we have to use shall after I we have to use shall after what we 
after I or we, we have to use shall, and after other subjects, we use will. That is, that is the rule of prescriptive grammar. But descriptive grammar says what? Uh, we can use either I will or I shall. I will is used by many people these days. That's why we can use it. I will. Okay. In this way, um, we will uh, do about descriptive grammar and prescriptive grammar. Okay. Clear? Are you clear? Yes, sir. Okay, descriptive grammar and prescriptive grammar are the two different types of uh, grammar. And they are the two opposing views. One describes the, the present day use of language and another, another prescribes the rules to use one sentence or the other. Right? One sentence use sentence ma kun rule use garne kasto situation aayo bhane kasto rule use garne that is given in prescriptive grammar okay and up to grade 10 up to grade 10 you studied mostly what prescriptive grammar okay now you would have the concept of a descriptive grammar as well because you are going to be a good english teacher in the future okay so Okay, can I move forward? Can I go to the next point? Have you uh, finished uh, copying that? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Then I'd like to move to the next one because I have to finish uh, this uh, unit. We'll finish unit one today and from tomorrow onwards, so we'll move to unit two. We have only one, there's a sub uh, topic left here. Okay, now next one is syntagmatic relation and paradigmatic relation. That's a paradigmatic relation and syntagmatic relation. These two are um, the new terms for you. Okay, the, but the concept here is not so much new to you that you have, um, I think you understand it easily. Okay, syntagmatic relation and paradigmatic relation are the two opposing views uh, in language and linguistics. Okay, syntagmatic relation is the um, original relationship among the words in a sentence okay it is original relation linear relationship okay between um the or among the words in a sentence but paradigmatic relations relationship is the relationship um it is the relationship uh, in the uh let's say uh, form of uh, um, verticality Okay, it is the vertical relationship, not horizontal, it is vertical relationship that you can be uh, easier, uh, you can uh, be, uh, let's say, uh, clear uh, about this by the example. Okay. Okay. Now, I'd like to move. Let's say, Parinandi Shashur, the same, uh, let's say, modern day linguist, okay, modern day linguist, or let's say, a modern linguist. Uh, Ferdinand J. Sassur makes uh, two kinds of relations in the structure of language. Okay, he makes two kinds of relations are there in the structure of language. One is syntagmatic relation, and another is what uh, paradigmatic relation. Okay, these are the two different that's a types of relations. The combination of a various letters or words to form a word or a string or a chain string refers to what a chain chain of words in horizontal direction is called syntagmatic relation okay it is the relationship relationship of words in horizontal direction for example the sentence here is what the, this sentence uh, is here mm, let's I like to uh, here now see here this sentence for example Fernandez Shur makes uh, two kinds of relations in the structure of language for example this is one sentence okay this sentence this is one sentence and here we ha you have got different uh, let's say words here makes uh, two kinds of relations in the structure of language for example this the, there is some kind of relationship between these two and kinds kinds and up up and relations relations and in Okay, the, here we have got some kind of horizontal. This is what? This is horizontal direction. Okay, this kind of direction is a horizontal direction, not vertical one. Okay, um, let's say that's why this type of relationship between kinds and up, 
up and relations relations and in in and the the and structure structure and up of and language okay this type of relationship is known as what is syntagmatic relation relation okay syntagmatic relation okay now next one uh, next point um, is for example in the sentence now you can be clear um, clearer from the example as i told you before for example in the sentence sita bought him a car now see here the words are in syntagmatic relation now see this you have to copy out in the same way okay you have to make this uh, uh, arrows double arrow there okay sita sita has some kind of relationship with what with a but and bot has some kind of relationship with sita bought him but has some kind of relationship with him and him um, has there's some kind of relationship with but okay and him and a uh, or uh, and him a uh, and car car and a uh. okay there is there's a, this kind of relationship uh, between um, or among the sentences in a word and such kind of let's say horizontal relationship is known as what syntagmatic relation okay syntagmatic relation so uh, syntagmatic relation is known as the relationship uh, uh, in the form of a horizontal direction okay horizontal direction so uh, now next one that is there is the relationship of presential in your um, objective question okay objective question this is uh, asked frequently okay what type of relation is integrated relation it is the relationship of presentia or it is the uh, relationship in the form of horizontal direction okay horizontal um, relationship among uh, the words in a sentence is known as syntagmatic relation in this way there is the relationship of presentia presentia means the relationship among the words present in the sentence okay among the word present in a uh, let's say sentence for example let's say chita but him a car okay the words are present here and word only each okay in a word word or which work relation like you you have a word but or two words some work relation that is known as what that is known as syntagmatic relation that's what is, there is the relationship of a presentia okay now uh, next one is um, let's say uh, paradigmatic relation and uh, what do you uh, define uh, how do you define uh, paradigmatic relation okay if the letters or words in syntagmatic relation can be replaced by the choice of the same category they are said to hold the paradigmatic relation now you can what does the sentence mean okay the words are in syntagmatic relation okay these here this type of relationship is, is what syntagmatic relation okay if the relationship um or let's say if the words okay if the words in this relationship can be replaced by the words of the same category then that is what that is let's say known as uh, paradigmatic relation okay for example instead of sita you can write what my sister sita bought him a car sita can be what my sister if you write here my sister bought him a car then that is what my sister and sita are what my sister is noun sita is also noun okay noun phrase okay for example sita bought him a car okay sita bought him a car now here you can say what sita gave him a car for example you can instead of bought you can write what gave sita gave him a car okay or sita bought him a pen you can say okay sita bought him a pen instead of car you can also use you can say pen there you can also say there's a book there okay you can also um, say scooter there Okay, Shita bought him a scooter, you can say. Okay, it's good. Okay, in this way, now, um, this type of relationship um, is known as what? A paradigmatic relation. That's a paradigmatic relation is known as what? The relationship of absentia. Absentia, when you go, yeah, no boy go back to one relation like you want Paradigmatic relation. Yeah, boy go word or relation like you want That is syntagmatic 
rotation. Okay, rotation in this way uh, uh, will do uh, about the paradigmatic relation. Uh, it is the relation. It is the vertical relationship. Vertical relationship. For example, the sentence is here the same. What? Sita bought him a car. Now, Sita bought him a car. Now, this is vertical relationship. This type, this type of arrow is what? This type of arrow is vertical. This type of arrow is what? Horizontal. This is horizontal. This is vertical line. And this is what horizontal line. Okay. Now vertical relationship. How? That is you can get Chita. Let's say bought him a car. Instead of a car, you can use a pen there. This type of relation, pen. Or let's say Chita bought him a, you can say what? Book. Okay. Chita bought him a book. At that time, this is the relationship between car and pen is what? Paradigmatic relation. The relationship between car and book is what? Paradigmatic relation. The relationship between car and sort is what? Sita bought him a sort. Okay. This type of relationship is known as a paradigmatic relation. Okay. Or you can say what? You can say, for example, there you can get shat, pat, rat, mat, pat, hat. Okay. Now see here, this type of relationship. The relationship between saw and pa. The relationship between saw and ra. Okay, the relationship between saw so and ma, the relationship between saw so and fa, the relationship between saw so and ha, they are what? This type of, because at, 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 at are what? The same here. Okay, the same. Only one, let's say, letter is replaced and we have got a new, we uh, have got a new word here. And the other matri letters are replaced because they have a new word back as well. Okay, bad, red, mad, fat hat okay this type of and the relationship between um yes and a the relationship between a and t you be the relationship like no problem yes a t go yes no a go a or t go relationship no problem that is what that is which one that is a syntagmatic relation okay the relationship between sha and pa the relationship between pa and ra ra and ma ra ma and fa and fa and ha this type of relationship is known as what Paradigmatic relationship. In this way, we do about a syntagmatic relation and paradigmatic relation. That's why we can uh, say paradigmatic relation has the relationship of absentia. This is the relationship of presentia, and this is the relationship of what? Absentia. That is paradigmatic relationship is the relationship of absentia and syntagmatic relationship is also known as the relationship. It has the relationship of what? Presentia. Presentia. Any present by word relationship? Yeah, no by Your sentence no by word relationship. Okay, in this way you can uh, find the differences between syntagmatic relation and paradigmatic relation. Okay. You have to copy out in the same way. You have to write down in the examination in the same way. In the same way, you have to uh, give a response. You have to give an answer. Okay, clear? Are you all clear? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Have you uh, copied them all? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Finished? Finished? Yes, sir. No, sir. No, no. Okay, okay do fast. Do fast, Mamata. Okay, you uh, have to copy and then fast because our time is running over. Running out. Okay, that is, uh, we have only two or three minutes left. Okay, we'll finish it now because you have another class to attend as well. Okay. Now, um, I like, uh, um, I think you have finished it. You finished it? Yes, sir. Okay, okay then. I like to um, uh, stop my screen share here. And thank you. Uh, thank you for taking part actively in, in this class today. Okay. And I'll, uh, uh, let's say, uh, stop my screen sharing here.